Hello everyone, we are the Applejacks and today we're going to be talking about cells and organelles, how they work. Oh, okay. The objectives, you should be able to explain the cell theory, describe what a eukaryotic cell is, describe and explain what organelles do, and for each organelle, explain the function and compare each organelle to another organelle's concept for a better understanding of it. So the th cell theory was kind of brought up by an old German scientist that stated that all cells, that all organelles, that all organisms, sorry, that are made up of cells and that cells are the basic unit of all living things. So like animals, humans, yeah. Um, you might ask, where do cells come from? Well, cells come from other existing cells. They kind of, like parents, they have little children and their children have children. So they kind of multiply and multiply more and more. And the eukaryotic cell, animals and humans have this specific cell. Um, as you see, there's little, little things inside the cell which are called organelles and these organelles are like little workstations in the cell that make it function itself. But yes, these are called organelles though. Okay, so organelles are the structures that allow the cell to live, grow, and reproduce. And we'll be going over the main organelles for our eukaryotic cells. <clears throat> the first cell is the the first organelle is the cell membrane. It surrounds the entire cell and holds it together, controls what comes in and out of the cell, and separates the cell from the outside environment. You can compare the cell to a gate and how the gate to the city and how it lets people in and out. The next organelle is the cytoplasm. It is a jelly-like fluid contained in the cell that holds the organelles together and moves nutrients throughout the cell. You can compare that to a pool holding, the pool water holding the floaty. Okay, today we're gonna to be talking about the nucleus. The nucleus is the control center of the cell. You can compare the nucleus to the president of the United States. The president of the United States controls the laws and runs the country. You can also compare the nucleus to your mom or dad who runs the household at what time you go to bed and what you eat for dinner. It also contains cells DNA. DNA, you might ask, what is that? Hmm, I don't know. And let's start by explaining what it stands for. It stands for deoxyribose nucleic acid. It contains key information on how living things function and work. Compare the DNA to a ladder. And as you go up each of the ladder, you find out what your skin color is, your eye color, and everything else in between. You also have the mitochondria. It is a powerhouse of the cell, and it provides the energy to the cell for the need of it to move, divide, and etc. Think of the mitochondria as a battery, a battery to charge your cell phone, to charge your laptop, and many more things. Ribosomes. It is a site where proteins are made. What are proteins, you ask? Proteins build, maintain, and replace tissues within the body. Not the tissues, you blow your nose in, but the tissues that make up organs, such as your lungs, your heart, and your kidney. Ribosomes also are also cell parts that are made up of proteins. These are ribosomes that make up proteins. Think of the ribosomes as factories of the cell, such as toy factories. They get all these little parts and put them together to make one big toy, AKA, or similar, ribosome. We are next going to be talking about the endoplasmic reticulum. The endoplasmic reticulum is connected to the nucleus and can be all different shapes, sizes, depending on the cell and where the cell is located. But there are two main types. The first is smooth endoplasmic reticulum. It's kind of like a package and it holds information and DNA from the nucleus and stores it until the cell needs it again. 
The next one is rough ER, and those have ribosomes on the end of it that act kind of like packages for like Amazon or UPS, if you ever see a package on your front door, and they basically hold all of the information that the nucleus gives out until it needs it again. The next thing we have is the Golgi complex. It's kind of like the Amazon of the cell, so it takes those packaged ribosomes and sends them to where the cell needs and pretty much anywhere in your body. Um, and sometimes it even acts like a smoothie R, so it saves it in the cell until your cell needs to use it or until it doesn't need it anymore and it just gets rid of it. The Golgi complex is also used to make lysosomes. A lysosome is kind of like a stomach for your cell. So whenever you eat something and you digest it and break it down in your stomach, it's kind of like that. So what it does is your cell eats something and it go, your lysosome goes to it and breaks it down. Um, and then it also does something cool. So it takes the, all that waste that it just broke down and sends it outside of the cell because it doesn't need, any, need it anymore. Lysosomes also can protect the cell. They can, whenever you touch like a door handle or something gross and dirty like that and you put your hands in your mouth and your cells get bad things like the flu or cold or something, your lysosomes help protect against it by eating all the bad stuff in your cell to help you not get sick. And now we are going to move on to a worksheet.